Welcome to Unruly Three, father of three unruly kids. I'm not ruly. A family member of mine got this diamond willow from a place in Savage, Montana. Got it about, I want to say four years ago, so the wood is super dry and ready to be made into a cane. So this is the first time trying this. I watched a couple different videos. There wasn't a lot of videos actually on YouTube about this, but I saw one guy had used these tools to kind of scrape it out. His looked really good, really cool, so I thought I would try doing it this way. Um, and after using some different tools, I kind of found that um, it was going to take quite a while, quite a while to do this. So you want to try to get all the way to the edge of the diamond here, all the way to the very edge of that, I, from what I'm understanding, and try cleaning them out like that. Using the tools, um, I think made it kind of, um, made it pretty neat, like the design on the inside was probably better, but um, I'm quickly gonna change over to using a Dremel tool. I got this one, you can't hardly tell, it didn't focus for me, but it's got a pretty good bite on it. And you'll see how much quicker this goes with this Dremel. Yeah. And so that really cleans it out pretty quick. So um, my grandpa, Unru, um, the first unruly one, I guess, he had a he had a cane that he walked with all the time. My grandpa was 65 years old when my dad was born. So um, he's a little bit older already. So by the time my mom met him, he was already in his 80s. And he had he walked with a cane all the time. And she said one of the things that he uh, that she remembered him doing is any time that the grandkids went running by, he would put his cane down and he would trip the grandkids. And he's, and she's like, he did it the whole time that they were there and they just kept falling. And then they, I, she wasn't sure if they were having fun, but they'd run back around the thing and, um, unsuspectingly get, get tripped again. So a story my dad told me about, um, about my grandpa one time, he said that my, the mailman had broke down and, um, he came walking up towards the house and looking for some tools or something. And all the kids were outside running all over the place. And the mailman looked up at my grandpa who was sitting up on the porch and said, Hey, do you got a monkey wrench? And my grandpa says, No, these are all my kids. So, so just in case my sister Lorna is listening, um, what he said was monkey wrench, but my grandpa heard monkey ranch. And he said, no, these are my kids because they're not monkeys. So just in case Lorna is listening. Um, anyway, you can see how the, the tool here is getting inside of these diamonds, starting to make the designs. You want to try, I don't know exactly how to do this. It's my first time doing one of these canes, but apparently you want to get all the way down, try to get out some of the, the root from where that branch comes out at. Dig in there pretty good to them. And then I just took this over to the sander. I tried doing it on this side. It didn't quite work as work out as good. The thicker side seems to work better. And you'll see I change over to that pretty quick. But I'm just going to kind of go all the way around this cane and try to get um, as much of this cleaned up as I can. So I'm kind of trying to use the bevel of that to kind of contour around the diamonds. So I don't want it to be totally flat. I want it to have some, some texture to it. So I'm just trying to get most of the, the excess bark or the, the crusties kind of off the edges here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take it over. I'm just gonna use my hand sander and if there's any t kind of grooves or anything, try to get rid of that. So with the hand sander, I put it on, I think I have 220 grit on here, and I'm just trying to get rid of any of the, the edges that I had left from the other sander, but trying to keep the edges that are around the diamond at the same time. 
kind of a little tricky, tricky thing there. All right, and then here you can kind of see if I let it focus a little bit, you can kind of see how they they look after I bore out those places and sanded it down. Not super well focused, but I think you get the idea. Then I'm going to take this over and just with some, I think this was 600 grit or maybe three, uh, probably 300 grit, and just kind of go around the inside of the holes a little bit and get rid of any other bark that's in there just so that it's going to take the finish good. So this wood was super hard too. It, um, I don't know what the what the rating on it would be, the Jenga rating or anything, but this Diamond Willow was incredibly hard wood while I was working with it. And now I was trying to think of what am I going to do for a handle. One thing that I had, I don't remember what show it was, but they had said that the handle of a cane should could should also be able to be used as some kind of weapon. I don't know, just in case. So I took this um, piece of mahogany and I drilled a hole in it. You can see the hole is just spinning pretty fast, but I'm just trying to get a basic idea for a shape for um, this this handle. So now that I'm kind of getting it down, I'm. I want the, the part with the hole on the edge to be thick enough to that where it's not going to split when I put it onto the cane. So then this other part, I'm just trying to make it comfortable in my hand. And so I'm just going to add a little bit on the edge to try to hold it so it doesn't slip out of your hand. And just kind of feel, like I said, just comfortable. But I'm totally going to change this in a little bit. So this cane is actually for a friend of mine who broke his leg just a little while ago getting a keg down. He's a brewer at a brewery, and he broke his leg by having a keg fall onto his leg. And um, so I'm, gonna, I'm making this cane to give to him. Um, all the tools, all the names of the beers are named after different lumbering things like a springboard Kolsch and a single buck IPA. So they're all named after different types of um, lumbering things. So I did some research into different types of tools that lumberjacks used and one of the tools that I saw that was something a little bit different was called a, a picaroon and it kind of has a it looks like a it's on an axe handle like a handle like an axe but it has a, a spike on it that you would poke into the wood and I think this was used mostly for people that were on like the water so you slam it into the wood and then you can pull it where the logs where you want. So here I have a couple wedges carved into this and I'm using some epoxy. And I'm just going to put these wedges, I think these wedges are walnut, and then just, um, like Bob Ross says, beat the devil out of it. So now I'm taking the handle over and I'm going to carve this into a picaroon. Take it over to the sander, and I'm just rounding this around um, and trying to get that shape a little bit. Obviously, I don't want this so incredibly um, sharp or anything that it's going to fall and actually crack or break. So I'm just rounding off the, the edges a little bit. And again, most important thing is making sure that it's comfortable in your hand. And also trying to get rid of the epoxy that's on the end. Trying to make it look nice. All right, so I'm getting ready to put the finish on it. So here's one of the, the diamonds. Once that finish goes on, you can really see the, the way the color pops on it. So I'm using the deft clear wood finish. This is the semi-gloss. I put probably about five coats on it and then just lightly sanded um, with some 600 in between. And then I put on maybe three more coats and here's the best that I have to show the finished product. So here's the end, the top 
looks like a picaroon and you can see those colors on it are amazing i did a really terrible job of getting this into focus here and getting all of it onto the so you could see the whole thing at one time but um yeah it's super pretty when it finished and he said that he was really happy with it i i, I think it turned out great so here's a picture of the final one and thanks again for watching